All right, welcome back to Morning Live. And right now I'm joined uh, by Prem Gukul, Vice President, Business Development, Medhill uh, Group of Hospitals. And uh, we want to tell about on, on, on something very interesting, the rise of Kenya as a medical tourism hub in Africa. Who knew Kenya is rising to be a medical hub? One of the top, actually, countries in Africa to be uh, a medical hub, which is very interesting because now, of course, we've had so many exchange programs happening all over the country, all over mid Africa, the world. I've seen Cuban doctors coming in, and trust me, there's so much happening. Uh, Prem, good morning. Good morning, Nick. I hope you're used to waking up this early. No, no, I have. <laughs> you used to? It's been a wonderful morning. Okay, wow, yeah. nice. Now, um, when you talk about medical tourism, not so many people are actually conversant about um, medical tourism because now they're wondering, now, medical tourism, what happens here? In a layman's language, yeah. maybe, you can tell us, w w what is medical tourism? Yeah. yeah. Um, in today's healthcare world, uh, medical tourism seems to be, a, you know, a buzzword. Okay. okay. Yeah, everybody's mm -hmm. excited about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But the concept goes back to you know ages. Okay. It's not the new concept where people have been traveling. The whole uh, the idea about the medical tourism is that mm -hmm. uh, when particular treatment options are not available in that particular country, okay. so the patient plans to go elsewhere uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, to seek his treatment needs, and that is coined as medical tourism. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now in that you have various kinds of uh, medical tourism, like you have inbound, uh, for example, Kenya. We have people coming from into the country from uh, neighboring countries. It's called okay. as inbound. Wow. Right. Wow. But okay. when Kenyans traveling to some other country, it's called as outbound medical like tourism. India, a very common country Kenyans yeah. travel to. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So mm -hmm. what matters is how strong is your inbound and how strong is your outbound. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. all. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, what's the global market scenario for medical tourism? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a latest study by Grand Review, and uh, they uh, the statistics says that it's, it's about like, you know, uh, 37 US billion dollar, mm -hmm. the current uh, market size okay. of uh, medical tourism. Wow. You know, uh, we will discuss on further, like, you know, which are the dominating countries sure. and things like that. Yeah. But at the same time, they also project mm -hmm. it is a very robust uh, growth rate okay. uh, with a CAGR of mm -hmm. about 22 to 23 okay. percent. Yeah. And they say in the next eight to 10 years, it might cross about 150 billion US wow. dollar. Wow. So that kind of robust uh, medical tourism industry is about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you look at Kenya, for yeah. example, um, it's it's so. N who knew maybe Kenya Kenya will be having uh, maybe people coming from out uh, uh, other countries to come to seek medication here, yeah. and you've been grappling actually with medical issues. Our yeah. hospitals not so equipped. Yeah. But look at private private entities. Yeah. Are they equipped to an extent of giving people confidence that in Kenya I can get good treatment in Kenya? Yeah. yeah. See, uh, uh, healthcare is all about you know evolution. Yeah. All right. It mm -hmm. takes some time for it to get evolved, and it's all about trust. Yeah. Unlike yeah. Mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. take any other industry like mm -hmm. a textile industry or mm -hmm. a, a automobile industry mm -hmm. or IT industry, yeah. healthcare is uh, a bit peculiar in nature. Absolutely. You know. Mm -hmm. So what happens is government does play a part of its role, okay. but if you look at historically, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at India, if you look at Thailand, yeah. if you look at Singapore. Mm -hmm. Most of these countries okay. are uh, Korea, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, Costa Rica. Sure. So what happens is it's the private players, mm -hmm. right, who who actually uh, try to build more confidence in terms okay. of innovation, in okay. terms of new medical techniques, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, as you're saying, like you know, uh, 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 how confident the people are, yes. right? So mm -hmm. private people they drive uh, to great extent. For example, okay. uh, Thailand, which is one of the famous world famous destinations you okay. know for people to travel okay. especially for uh, plastic surgery sure. uh, so on and so forth they have about 450 private hospitals wow 450 well private equipped. hospitals well equipped okay. right uh -huh. and more than 50 of them are jci accredited okay right jci okay. is the highest accreditation in the world wow. right okay. and then a uh, few of the hospitals, mm -hmm. the 50% of the revenue that is generated mm -hmm. or 50% of the patient footfall mm -hmm. that happens in that hospital are from international patients, okay. right? Okay. So that's the kind of uh, confidence and that's the kind of uh, role a private okay. player is going to play. Even in okay. India, if you look at the healthcare landscape, yeah. the, all the medical tourism buzz or mm -hmm. the people who started coming, traveling in, uh -huh. happened only when few of the private players took the mantle okay. and got in the best of the infrastructure and okay. the best of the medical devices uh -huh. and then the story began. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Now maybe you can give us a top five destinations uh, yeah. um, for medical tourism. Of, mm -hmm. You mentioned Thailand, yeah. the likes of Konkain University yeah. Hospital. There's yeah. so many hospitals actually yeah. in Thailand. Bomangrad is one of the most uh -huh. uh, sought after uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. hospitals. Uh -huh. yeah. Now five top destinations. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, if you look at the five top destinations, of, of course, you know, uh, India would definitely rate as one of the best destinations. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and then followed by Thailand, Costa Rica, okay. Singapore, uh -huh. Germany. Okay. Yeah, Mexico is also one of the wow. uh, uh, you know wow. popular destinations. Where's Cuba? Where's Cuba? You know, Cuba came as <laughs> to Cuba. Yeah. And that's no, in program Cuba, and Cuba uh -huh. uh, to my uh, knowledge or uh -huh. the uh, uh -huh. uh, my readings in the, the article and uh, 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 not much. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because, okay. like, for example, when I attend uh, World Medical Tourism Conferences at uh, US, yeah. you know, or yeah. other places in Washington DC, I've been there a couple of times. Sure. So I'm not seeing any Cuban delegation there. Wow. So what happens is you have uh, your uh, uh, Thailand, uh -huh. Costa Rica, okay. the, the country they present as a pavilion. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. India, uh -huh. Singapore. Uh -huh. Yeah. These are the countries which represent. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Now, uh, the health scenario in Africa. Mm. Of course, Kenya is rising in Africa. Yeah. yeah, we're not rising. Of course, no one come from Germany to come to Kenya to seek treatment. Yeah. So that will be mind-boggling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, what's the health scenario in Africa? Yeah, see, in Africa, uh, we have got a long way to go uh, in healthcare okay. because only two, three countries which always we keep hearing uh, one is South Africa down in south, okay. another is Egypt in the north, mm -hmm. right? So, except these two, three countries, let's say Morocco or Tunisia. Uh, rest of the Africa, Central, mm -hmm. East, West, mm -hmm. uh, we still have a long way to go in terms of uh, competing with the first world countries, okay. right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, Kenya has got a strategic advantage of tourism, okay. yeah, as mm -hmm. compared to other countries. Sure. Now, what happens is when the, when the Europeans are traveling here, when people from other African countries are traveling here, mm -hmm. right, if when they see that the healthcare system here is very good, okay. and uh, what is more important is, mm -hmm. um, how well it is packaged okay. and then you know how you can translate that uh, high-end medical services okay. at an affordable cost mm -hmm. is also what matters okay yeah interesting mm -hmm. now but 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 eventually why is mm -hmm. kenya considered as yeah. one of the top destinations in africa yeah. it's 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 kind of confusing because yeah. as much as uh, its citizens are crying mm -hmm. foul over medical conditions yeah. mm -hmm. or medical uh, maybe platforms in the country yeah. especially the public yeah. hospitals yeah. but surprisingly mm -hmm. kenya is becoming one of the top yeah. african yeah. countries yeah yeah now, it's a very good question, Nick. Uh, what happens is, you see, uh, in any domain, you know, not only in healthcare, you know, it, it's a perception, you know, that becomes a reality over a period of time, okay. which Thailand or India were very good at in creating it. Now, unfortunately, in Kenya, you know, a small incident that happens. See, healthcare is all very, very unpredictable, yeah, and yeah. nobody wants a patient to die. Yeah, sure. for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what happens is a small incident blown out of proportion, mm -hmm. you know, in the negative perception, yeah. right? Yeah. And then yeah. that is picked up by CNN mm -hmm. or BBC, and then like you know, yeah, uh, the, you know, you know blown out of proportion, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So that's very unfortunate on the okay. in, in the one for okay. uh, one part. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that, as you said, why Kenya? Now, if you look at Kenya, right? Uh, as I've uh, shared earlier, also it has got a strategic advantage. Now, apart from that. For example, Medihil has started a renal transplant program for the last four or five months okay. and we have done more than 15 successful kidney transplants. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, all the countries in the South Central and East African region, there is hardly any kidney transplant program. Uh -huh. You know, you take Nigeria, you take yes. Uganda, okay. you take okay. Burundi, Rwanda, Tanzania, so the Ethiopia, there is no kidney transplant okay. program. Mm -hmm. Now, kidney transplant is one of the very high-end services, okay. right? Okay. Okay. Now, your cardiac services. Now, for example, you say we have PET scan in the country today. Mm -hmm. Now. PET scan is available only in two places uh, in, 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 in on the whole continent. Wow. Now, Kenya is the third country to have it. Wow. You know, so wow. what happens is when you have a better infrastructure, mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. that's uh, uh, how you evolve. Yeah. And more importantly, yeah. what happens is there were people who have been coming into the country mm -hmm. from Uganda, from South Sudan, mm -hmm. from, from Burundi, from Congo. Okay. Now, word of mouth is one of the most powerful tool mm -hmm. in healthcare. Sure. You know, however, whatever, you know, uh, uh, corporate branding that you do from your side, but whatever the patient goes out and gives your feedback, so that's really working out for Kenya. Wow, yeah. interesting. But at this point in time, Nick, you know, uh, from government side and not many private players, we are doing any proactive events, mm -hmm. you know, which mm -hmm. most of the countries mm -hmm. are doing, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So that's where we, uh, we are behind. But then saying that, there is a lot of scope mm -hmm. uh, what a Kenya can do mm -hmm. to, to fast track its growth and okay. to, you know, to, to be there in the league and then leave behind the countries also and then move forward. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how can private sector now play um, in terms of now ensuring the growth in this health sector? Because w when you see the government right now, for example, public hospitals, they're now trying to install the CT scan machines in all the county hospitals. Yeah. But you see, the CT scan machine is something... I, 
private hospitals have been having for quite some time. Yeah. But now all county hospitals are now being installed with these high-tech machines. Yeah. Now, do you think the private sector can play a big role in terms of now trying to um, transition this perception yeah. of indeed even public hospitals can be yeah. trusted? Yeah. I know the bigger picture, yeah. there's the business aspect, yeah. but look also at the yeah. healthcare of its citizens. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, certainly, Nick, you know, see, uh, Kenya, all said and done, has yeah. got a very robust healthcare system. Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, public hospitals can be trusted. There is no doubt about it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But coming to see, everybody has got a role to play yeah. in the healthcare Absolutely. sector. Very yeah. true. Government mm -hmm. has got a role to play. The mm -hmm. public sector has Very got true. a role to play. Very the true. private hospitals mm -hmm. have got a role to play. Mm -hmm. Now, private sector, in terms of bringing new technology, in terms of bringing the new uh, high end infrastructure, yeah. you know, we talk about city mm -hmm. at, a, at a public hospital. Sure. Now, at a private hospital, we are talking about a pet city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. a pet city is the one which actually gives the staging of the cancer. Yeah. You know, when a person is diagnosed with cancer, mm -hmm. what stage the cancer is, you know? So, uh, with, with very high end level, mm -hmm. right? The radiation machines, yeah. And then, for example, there were a couple of surgeries which were done in Eldorate at Medihill, which mm -hmm. were done for the first time in Africa, wow. for the wow. very first time in Africa. Okay. So, these surgeries were very, very high end. Now, to accomplish this, you need the skill sets mm -hmm. and you need the infrastructure to support that, that, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's where a private hospital will play a role, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how fast you, you move on from there mm -hmm. is what matters. Okay. But, as I key, as I uh, you know, reiterate once again, mm -hmm. if you look at the historically also other countries, mm -hmm. it was a private, uh, public-private partnership, or even yeah. private people alone, mm -hmm. one are the ones who who, act, who are actually driving the uh, the the growth yeah. of the healthcare. Yeah. yeah, interesting growth yeah. of the healthcare. Yeah. very good uh, point over there. Now, what are the markers? Mm -hmm. What are the indications that, of course, uh, promote yeah. this growth of healthcare in Kenya? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there are two three things very pertinent. One. Uh, the overall economy will always play a very major role uh, on the healthcare uh, okay. uh, that has an impact on the healthcare, mm -hmm. right? How robust is your insurance sector? You know, uh -huh. uh, a lot of people are still uncovered uh, okay. by insurance, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. So that shows the growth. So what happens is once you're insured, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. you, you, you are, your capability, mm -hmm. you become better in terms of uh, covering yourself okay. you know, from illnesses and you have the better paying capacity, okay. Okay. right? Mm -hmm. So your new innovative techniques mm -hmm. in, the, in, in, in the healthcare uh, and then your better treatment options that are there and then medical devices, yeah, skill sets mm -hmm. and then more importantly hospitality, you know, um, I've been to Thailand a couple of times for yeah. conferences. Yeah. There's yeah. amazing hospitality that they extend uh, to the people who come into the country. Absolutely. So what happens is um, as we are on the, you know, on the, on the curve of yeah. learning, yeah. right? Yeah. So you have, let's say, uh, inception, if any product cycle, mm -hmm. if you take your inception, your growth, and then you are saturated. Sure. So there are first world countries which are in the saturated phase. And there are countries with the growth phase like India, you know, Thailand, Korea, mm -hmm. uh, a lot is happening in Asia. Then you are at the, at the <coughs> beginning of the race, mm -hmm. like few of the countries, like we have just entered the league of medical tourism, uh, okay. Kenya as a country. Mm -hmm. Now you have to learn a lot, you know, in terms of how you make the things affordable, look at uh -huh, India. Today, uh -huh. if India has become so popular, it's because of the affordability, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. But then uh, we, we are doing a, a lot of things. Okay. But how perfect we do is what matters. Okay, For example, let's say what India is doing today, mm -hmm. we are doing almost to the tune of 85 to 90 percent. Except let's say a bone marrow transplant or yeah. a, you know, a stem cell yeah. kind of thing, which yeah. we're not doing. Yeah. But barring that, I think mm -hmm. in cardiac, in joint replacements, mm -hmm. in organ transplant, except liver, you know, mm -hmm. we are doing almost all most of the things in, in the country today. Absolutely. But I think one area where we need to uh, uh, still improve mm -hmm. and do a lot of work is awareness. Mm -hmm. You see, I think the other day uh, there was a statement in the paper by uh, the health uh, the health minister, yeah, uh, yeah. Kariuki, yes, right? Yeah, sure. And then she said about Kenya spending about uh, 10 million USD wow. every year, mm -hmm. you know, Kenyans are spending by mm -hmm. going out of the country to seek the treatment. Outbound, now that actually. money can mm -hmm. be saved in the country itself which can be reinvested in the country in the healthcare infrastructure mm -hmm. and that's a huge amount okay, okay, you know so when okay. we're talking about outbound inbound mm -hmm. today at present mm -hmm. uh, your outbound burden is more yeah. people travel more people are traveling outside yeah, yeah. and very less people are traveling inside okay. which need to be reversed actually Absolutely. we should be having more people traveling inside yes. so that very less people travel outside uh, okay yeah. We're taking a short break now. When you come back, you want to talk about now the art of reversing outbounds. Because now, at the end of the day, we need people to come in. And also, um, the Premier will be telling us about the cost. Because you've seen so many people, social media, are having the posters that need contribution of the, uh, for their treatment and things like that. And uh, the cost of this medication. But at the end of the day, the bigger picture, we want more people to remain at home for treatment. And of course, not go outside. All that coming to you after a short break.
All right, welcome back to Morning Live. And of course, this discussion, even from my end, I'm learning so much on how Kenya is becoming one of the most looked um, or maybe sought after uh, tourism, that's medical tourism destinations in Africa. And trust me, we're doing well as far as now. Um, uh, our equipment from private hospitals to some public hospitals are concerned. Let's now talk about the reverse. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to talk about these guys who go outside to seek yeah. medication, but in this country, we still have the same, same equipment they're looking for here in our private hospitals. Yeah. Now, when you factor in the ticket, flight tickets, mm -hmm. when you factor in, um, uh, for example, accommodation, mm -hmm. when you factor in the real cost of what they're going to actually get, mm -hmm. it becomes very expensive. It does. But we still have this thing here. Now, how can we reverse the trend? Yeah. How do we do this? Is it marketing our hospitals? Yeah. Marketing what we have? Yeah. Maybe from experience, how can yeah. you do this? Um, see, so far what's happening is uh, what I see uh, from my understanding, there's a lot of gap in terms of awareness. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, if you take as a, a renal transplant, kidney yes. transplant as yeah. an example, sure. now, not many people in the whole of the country know that there are hospitals which are offering these services. Oh, yeah, right? true that. Not only offering these services, mm -hmm. but also at a very affordable price. Okay. Right? I know there are few hospitals which are a bit expensive, but still what happens is in healthcare, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the studies prove that yeah. when you have your own people around mm -hmm. and then you have your own food to eat, you know, uh, sure. uh, these cultural things and all makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. when you travel to a foreign land, there's always a stress. Okay. Now, the belief uh, that everybody works with at, at Medihill mm -hmm. is that, you know, African patients should be treated in Africa. Okay. And that's the chairman vision, actually. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And then, unless, what we are also trying to do, mm -hmm. yeah, unless you don't uh, translate the most advanced techniques that you have mm -hmm. and the most advanced facilities that you have into an affordable reach okay. of the people, okay. uh, it doesn't make any sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you take a renal transplant as an example, right, in India, if you go, you spend like about 1.5 million on the surgery. Sure. Right. And then you have your flight tickets to bear. Most of the times, only the recipient and the donor come because they cannot afford the third person, yeah. which is also mandatory because <coughs> there, has to be an, there has to be an attendant to travel. Sure. Now, three people go there. Uh, you spend almost like more than, you know, uh, 3,000 kind of things, Stru dollars, Stru right, Stru on flight tickets. Yeah. Now, the moment you go, you cannot undergo a transplant there because there is a local organ transplant committee which approves your case. Wow. Sometimes they reject, sometimes they approve. If they reject, that means all your costs that, that has gone, gone of traveling, the time and everything will go in vain, wow. right? Wow. So you go there and then you wait and then you spend from your pocket for the accommodation, for food, for yeah, dialysis, for all those things. Yeah. I've seen instances, you know, when people used to travel from Somalia, uh, you know, from so many other countries when mm -hmm. I was in India, right? Uh, before actually their approval comes yeah. and uh, they are called for the transplant, they're mm -hmm. already exhausted with all the funds that they mm -hmm. have. Yeah, sure. And then they struggle, you know, uh, do Harambe, you yeah. know, call the people, yeah. and yeah. a lot of stress actually. That, yeah. Now people don't know that, uh, for example, at Medihill, we are trying to package the whole affair of this at about 1 million to 1.2 million, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, which is a very, very economical and very affordable. So that's where you give a fight in the competition in sense okay, uh, okay. to the counterparts. Mm -hmm. Now, when we say we are in the league, we are offering, uh, you know, the best services here, okay. the best healthcare quality services mm -hmm. at an affordable price. Mm -hmm. And that's where you actually sustain and uh, build. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, there's an issue that I was trading on Twitter some time back yeah. about the cost of medication in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, some people felt like um, some hospitals mm -hmm. kind of now uh, rob them off from the insurance cards. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when you see you have a card, mm -hmm. they kind of take advantage. Is this mm -hmm. true? Uh, if there has been incidents, uh, uh, we cannot deny that. But yeah. in general, it doesn't happen that way. Yeah. Because what happens is there is a lot of mechanisms the lot of audit system that happens. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and also every hospital has got its image, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. So just for one patient's sake and just to make some bucks, they cannot keep their, uh, they cannot have uh, their brand image at stake, you yeah. know, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So probably one of the incidents, right? And then as I told you, like, you know, what happens is something somewhere goes wrong in the country with some medical, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, event which mm -hmm. has gone wrong. Mm -hmm. Now it is, uh, you know, blown shared proportion. with the whole country actually. Yeah, true that. Now my point is, mm -hmm. when hundred good things happen, we hardly get to hear anything. Absolutely. Like for example, have you ever heard that you know we have done the the surgeries for the first time, which took place in uh, in Africa, like frioma cytoma, yeah. uh, you know yeah. the the kind of surgery that we did, mm -hmm. but nobody knows, you know. Yeah. So that's what it happens. Right? But the, the, the wrong yeah. thing happens. Yeah. It's out here. It's out there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. But then I think what I would like to request the the general people and the public is that we need to have faith in our own system. That's, on, that's only yeah. when people will come from outside. That's a very important part, having faith in our own system. In our own system. Okay. You can't always scrape, cry, and talk negative about yeah. it. Yeah. There are certainly the positive things also. I'm not saying everything is perfect, yeah. but we are learning. 
we are growing on this curve, yes. right? Yes. And for which there is a lot of support that is required even mm -hmm. from a common man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. we need to speak high about our own system. That's true. That I'm sure there are things mm -hmm. which we need to address. We will address it, mm -hmm. but. When we talk, let's say half an hour you're talking, yeah, don't yeah. talk 30 minutes on the negative part of it. And then why? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now, um, Africa as a whole, Kenya, this is very impressive. Yeah. Uh, from where I'm seated, I feel like Kenya, yeah. I think you're growing in yes. and bounds. Yes. Now, um, Africa as a whole, yeah. you've mentioned countries like um, Congo, yeah. maybe Burundi, yeah. patients yeah. coming yeah. to Kenya to seek uh, medication. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, w w what do you think should be the overall solution so that even in Africa as a whole, mm -hmm. we can now be self-dependent, mm -hmm. outbound now yeah. as a continent? Yeah. Because now, yeah. as Switch TV, yeah. we are in Tanzania, we are in Uganda, yeah. we are we actually all over kind of the yeah. continent, in Burundi. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the discipline mm -hmm. to self maybe mm -hmm. satisfy ourselves mm -hmm. in terms of mm -hmm. now having our own so that at least we even save so much money mm -hmm. uh, to go outside yeah. what's your opinion on this yeah. are we getting there or is still maybe a long journey for us no to no we are this? getting there okay because uh, uh i've been traveling in africa for last um, eight to nine years now uh, for all these countries you know let them print up the continent i've traveled okay. nigeria congo all these mm -hmm. countries mm -hmm. now what i reflect back you know eight years back for example i still remember 2000 12 end or 2013 early I was in Congo okay now I visited the national referral hospital there and I was just inquiring how the healthcare infrastructure looks like and that was a shock to me okay. cultural shock you know okay. because uh, they said the only city that was available in the country was a one slice city wow. right wow. one slice city uh, no MRI for the whole of the country it's about no seven eight years back I'm talking about okay but okay. now okay. today when I look back okay. you know, there are three four very good hospitals that have come up there okay you now they have MRIs they have uh, you know a whole lot of infrastructure okay so all these countries which are mentioned in mm -hmm. most of the countries mm -hmm. a lot is happening like mm -hmm. they are also trying to you know uh, have uh, self-sustainability right that. in which uh, when we are competing with each other I feel Kenya is growing much much faster okay. as compared to other people okay yeah okay now when you talk about uh, in, in the dailies the other day that uh, some medical a, a good number of medical students Mm -hmm. and just even graduated not even students mm -hmm. and they've graduated they are very qualified mm -hmm. but they don't have jobs mm -hmm. now I talk about experience consultancy we yeah. have so many doctors consulting for different hospitals yeah. now do they still have a chance to fit in because some time back we used to know mm -hmm. medicine as a course yeah. you're assured of a job yeah. immediately yeah. after you graduate why yeah. are things changing it's like supply demand you know Okay. How well uh, you have your infrastructure in place so that you have more hospitals, okay. more polyclinics. Mm -hmm. See, healthcare, you have your primary care, okay. you have secondary care, mm -hmm. and then you have tertiary care and quaternary okay. care. Okay. Quaternary care is what we are talking about in terms of, let's say, bone marrow transplants, oh. stem cell transplants, oh. liver transplants, okay. right? Uh, tertiary care is when you're talking about the renal transplants mm -hmm. and like, you know, cardiac care and uh, your cancer care and all those things. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, secondary is mostly at the county level, like, you know, where things are addressed. Primary at the okay. village level, okay. right? Okay. So now we have to make like you as part of the universal health care also Absolutely. right mm -hmm. uh, accessibility is one of the major pillars yeah, yeah, right so what happens is when you expand mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. either from a government level or mm -hmm. from a private level okay. so that's where you create more jobs uh -huh. right as you also said like you know what do we do uh -huh. in the continent you know uh, to have more of the uh, infrastructure and more of the uh, treatment options available mm -hmm. now at present if you see uh, Africa as a continent spends about more than like 3, 3.5 billion USD okay. uh, on outbound medical travel. Wow. Either they travel wow. to Middle East or wow. either they travel to Asian countries yeah. like Thailand, etc. Mm -hmm. Right? So that money can be saved again. Right? Mm -hmm. And saved and then reinvest in the infrastructure. It's true that, it's true yeah. That, yeah. Okay, interesting. But do you look for experience? For example, at Medhill, yeah. I, I, I'll specifically point at your hospital. Yeah. Now, uh, for a doctor who's seeking employment, mm -hmm. how will he maneuver through to get actually be part of your team? Because now, yeah. uh, as much as you talk about the sophisticated machines you yes. have, yes. there's some sort of experience you will need from a doctor. Yeah. Will you accommodate this guy who's just starting? We will do that. So what's happening at Medhill, I'll tell you. Now, a lot of uh, doctors who are working with us are also Indian doctors. Okay. So it's a knowledge transfer you know okay so what we do is we have the local doctors who have been mm -hmm. working with us for very for very okay. very long time mm -hmm. so people who come to us and show interest so they uh, work together as a team okay okay, okay. Now when i say renal transplant or okay. a advanced brain and spine surgery sure. or when i say you know non-invasive pain management techniques okay. a lot of local doctors also come and join sure, sure. right okay. so what happens is you become a center of excellence for training, uh -huh. not only for uh, surgeries, okay. for training also. Okay. So what happens, these doctors, they learn. Uh -huh. Let's say a doctor is coming from Bungoma, from okay. Kisi, from okay. Kisumu. Sure. They learn and they go back and start doing uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, th there's so many people who believe surgeries can be done by 
specific doctors in this country mm -hmm. who are good maybe in eye surgery, mm -hmm. who are good in uh, maybe stomach surgery, yeah. uh, different part of, uh, types of surgery. Yeah. Now, um, is this a perception mm -hmm. or uh, the, the people who kind of uh, just uh, maybe specialize? Yeah. I know specialization yeah. is very yeah. key here, yeah. but do you think maybe that this, those hospitals that have actually just branded themselves specifically for this yeah. type of uh, uh, procedure? Yeah. No, um, um, it's it's uh, it is specialized. Okay. The people who are having expertise, yes, yeah, in that particular domain, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, they can perform only those surgeries, yes. and they have to also. Mm -hmm. That's why we see a lot of standalone uh, institutes that are coming up, which yeah. are dedicated only for IVF. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, ah, which are dedicated absolutely. only for joint replacements. Okay. Which are dedicated only for neurosurgery. Uh -huh. They don't do anything uh -huh. beyond than that. Okay. So okay. it is very very important. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's it's uh -huh. important for the people also to understand uh -huh. to do a bit of their you know homework before uh -huh. they go to a doctor or okay. before they go to a hospital uh -huh. to check the credentials. You know of that particular institute and also of that particular doctor okay. you know so it's 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 very important okay yeah. will you see maybe one day um maybe some people patients from western countries mm -hmm. coming to kenya or another african country mm -hmm. to seek medication will we dream maybe one day we'll have that i i, I don't doubt about it okay it does it, it is going to happen uh -huh. it's going to happen sooner than later <laughs> you know as i uh, keep reiterating like you know the biggest advantage that kenya has got in the region is the tourism okay the strategic advantage Absolutely. you already have people in the country all you uh -huh, need to know, all you need uh -huh, to do is uh -huh. you just speak to them uh -huh, you know the uh -huh. foreigners who are coming yes. uh, you know the muzungus the yes. white people yeah, right, from europe from other countries yeah. like for example we have a very good dental systems here we have very good plastic surgery uh, units uh -huh. right so all uh, is needed is yeah. communication yeah, yeah. Right? Absolutely. and then it's very absolutely. affordable prices as compared to uh -huh. uh, europe or to you know america or other countries okay yeah all right yeah. impressive thank you so much for coming today thanks Nick. really appreciate your sentiments we've learned so much and i believe now no i, I think it's clear not everyone should travel outside the country to yeah. get medication yeah. we have hospitals in this country actually that can give us so much uh, yeah. care and attention sure. and thank you so much for your sentiments sure. and thanks good job you for today. hosting me on the morning live show you're like it's you're been an honor and privilege you're welcome thank Anytime. you so much all right thank you we're taking a short break now when you come back you want to talk about the pressure social media kind of puts some young characters in place all we're coming to you after a short break